Welcome everyone to this live session with Island Innovation to talk about the Work in Nature program in Dominica. This is going to be a super exciting session. Uh, we'll learn about why the so-called Nature Island is such a great place for people to go and work and learn, some, learn from some people based in Dominica about what the uh, tourism authority there is doing to attract remote workers and why this is such an attractive uh, proposition for anyone looking to work remotely, escape the city and work in nature. So we've got two uh, speakers based in Dominica who will be telling us um, a bit about the program and then a bit about their experiences. Uh, firstly, uh, Samantha Latang, who's a marketing executive for the Discover Dominica Authority, and then Hannah Gaventa, who is a remote worker uh, who has relocated last year to the islands to work on the program. Um, at Island Innovation, we are very enthusiastic about the opportunity for remote work um, and so-called digital nomads to really help, help uh, island economies rebuild um, and recover from all the difficulties of the last year. And I think this is a really great example of a program that can help really build a new and more sustainable element within tourism. And if there's anywhere that you could work remotely, where better than Dominica? So with that, I'd like to invite Sam to share your screen uh, and tell us a little bit about the program, uh, what you've been doing to make the experience attractive for people moving there and uh, how we can relocate to Dominica. Over to you, Samantha Latang. Thanks, James, and good afternoon or good morning or good evening to where, wherever you are. Um, it's our pleasure to have you with us um, today as we present to you um, the Work in Nature program by the Commonwealth of Dominica. And for those of you who don't know Dominica, we have to really separate the two. We are not the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a Spanish speaking country. Dominica is English. Um, we have the last surviving Kalinago Indians of the region. Their name for Dominica was actually called Waiti Kubuli. And it actually means tall is her body. And as you can see from the mountain ranges, Dominica is exactly that, tall. And that perfectly describes the destination on land and um, underwater. There's actually a, a saying that, that goes that um, when Columbus came back from sighting the island, um, he came to the queen and she asked him, well, tell me about this country. And his first thing was, um, you know, this is what Dominica looks like. He pulled out a piece of parchment paper, broke it up and crushed it up and just threw it on the floor and said, this is Dominica. That's how rugged the destination is. And that's how we continue um, in our promotions of the island. Um, we are therefore dubbed the nature island of the Caribbean. And it's actually one of the, I think it's one of the best kept secrets of the Caribbean with our mountain ranges, our lush rainforests, our waterfalls, natural spas, and what we say, we have a river for every day of the year. We are only um, 289 square miles, that's 16 square kilometers, sorry, that's 16 miles wide and 29 miles long. But with the volcanic origins of the island, we are blessed with some of our mountain ranges um, go as high as 4,000 plus feet above sea level. Um, besides English, we also speak a, a French Creole called Patois. And that is as a direct result of being colonized by both the French and the English. And we received um, independence from Britain on November 3rd, 1978. So Dominica is really um, a, a haven for nature at its best. And we, what better name to call our, our working um, remotely um, opportunity than work in nature. Um, going on, I would just want to give a little bit of background. Of course, we have been um, really going through the pandemic um, with everybody else in the world, but we have continued to be steadfast in our management. Um, as of last week, Wednesday, we only have total active cases at two and no deaths. And we have um, been giving out the doses of the vaccine so far, 
um, numbers over 18,000, which, which translate to 40% of persons on island, adult population on island, have received their first dose of the vaccine. Um, we are also been awarded the safe travel stamp by the WHO, and that's in recognition for Dominica's safety and hygiene protocols for the tourism industry. So we have really been working hard at ensuring that our protocols have been on par with the rest of the world and even better than, the, than some of the islands in the Caribbean to ensure that our visitors and our locals here on island are safe uh, when it comes to um, the COVID-19 pandemic. A little bit more background. Um, as we continued seeing, you know, when we reopened our borders in August last year, we were trying to see how best can we revamp the tourism industry. Of course, tourism was hard hit, um, as many of the other industries, but they were really, they really suffered a number of, of job losses, etc. And towards the end of 2020, in October, actually, we came up with what we called safe in nature. As you notice, we have that in nature, everything that we do, we're really looking at, at sort of showcasing the best of the island. So the Safe in Nature program was sort of uh, um, launched to give you that managed experience during your first seven days of your visit on island. So, so when, we, when we saw the whole aspect of quarantine, and I really don't like to hear the word quarantine, it sounds so depressing, so restrictive, um, but we saw the necessity of it, but we really wanted to encourage persons to come and still have them enjoy the destination. So you're going to have a managed experience when you come for the Safe in Nature program. So you come from the time you land on island, from the time you leave, your accommodation um, service provider will be providing that managed experience. Within that managed experience, you're, in, you're expected to have your five-day PCR test done, and your results will be received either the sixth or the seventh day. And from that, you are free to roam the island, free to continue as expected. So you, it includes restaurant stops, spas, transportation, um, and the tour operators that are, are part of, of the certification, certification of the Safe in Nature and ensuring that guests on island really do have a good time during that, that so-called quarantine aspect of it. And coming out of the Safe in Nature um, program, we decided let us do the work in nature aspect. And the work in nature is, was launched in March, late March, 2021. And it is an extended stay visa program. And it was really targeting persons who um, wanted to come to the destination, who are interested in, in discovering the island, but also interested in working. And we saw the opportunity with um, the digital nomads community um, and really wanted to extend it a bit further by inviting families, um, looking at persons on sabbaticals from work, from school, um, persons who are interested in volunteerism. So we really are very much interested in that impact tourism. What are they going to do on island to, to impact the tourism industry? Um, we're looking at persons looking to, to rejuvenate, to reinvent, to, to sort of kind of re re refine re themselves um, and what better place like we said it's a win-win opportunity what better place in Dominica now the win the win program or the work in nature program is relocating persons in Dominica um, for up to 18 months and that still offers you the opportunity to renew you can um, renew that visa so it's not only for 18 months and then um, bye bye Dominica you have the opportunity of renewal we always believe in that whole aspect of work-life balance. And as part of the Work in Nature program, we afford that opportunity um, where you have the, the, the chance of, of working in the morning and playing in the afternoon. And what better place but Dominica? Of course, families are really encouraged um, to take part in the program. Children can be part of their online um, studies, or we have some families who have um, enroll their kids into our school system here. We have both private and public options available for both um, primary school, secondary school, and even tertiary education. So um, there's no excuse that the kids can't um, come in and learn. And I, I always believe um, immersing the kids in a different culture actually um, helps in their development and their understanding of world issues of, of different cultures and their tolerance of, of different um, 
persons and, and how they interact um, on a daily basis global in this global environment that we are in right now. So we really want to encourage persons in getting that sort of balancing act, that work-life balance um, in Dominica as part of the Work in Nature uh, program. We have a number of um, certified accommodation properties that are part of um, the Work in Nature program. They are certified by the Discover Dominica Authority, which is the authority charged with um, the licensing of the sector. Um, they have all met the health and safety requirements, especially during this COVID um, period from the health uh, authorities. Uh, we have a wide range of properties from quaint to luxurious options, from bed and breakfast to, to five-star properties, and they are all equipped for working remotely. Um, of course, they have the high-speed internet services. Um, some have um, self-catering services or restaurants on property. They also have, some of them have co-working spaces um, within that community, which we will touch on in a while. So we have quite a range of properties. We've also had a number of, um, a number of real estate companies come on board uh, with rental properties and even for the options for persons to buy. We've had a number of people who have decided to purchase properties on island and, and sort of have a sort of a getaway uh, when they so, so need it. Um, to come and work and, and, of course, to play in Dominica. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a big something big that we really want to encourage is how can persons make this meaningful contribution towards the sustainability? Um, Dominica has always prided itself on being very resilient. Um, we came from a very devastating hurricane in 2017, and we have built back bigger and better and stronger. Um, we have had a very robust uh, housing program to ensure that persons in different, maybe more um, vulnerable communities have the proper housing that can withstand at least a category five hurricanes and ensure putting the healthcare systems within these communities that persons are able to seek assistance when needed. We have also been um, looking into the whole aspect of geothermal because of the number, because of Dominica's volcanic um, nature, we have been looking at the geothermal aspect of things on island and this coming on stream very soon. And we also have banned single use plastics and styrofoams on island. So this is actually a plus towards the sustainability of Dominica in general. And we saw it as an addition to our um, sustainability as a tourism industry. So persons working within the communities, and that's the beautiful thing about Dominica, we would expect persons to, um, yeah, you visit the city, you visit the main um, 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 areas, but also to you have the opportunity of living and working within a small knit community. Um, you have the opportunity to take part in environmental, in tourism projects, in education. We actually had a group of um, teachers who were here working remotely, and in the afternoons they would give um, lessons or afternoon classes to the to the churn in the community. And that's some of the ways that they could give back. We have had persons interested in, in you know, they have never worked on a farm. They've never seen um, a, a, a ground provisions like Dasheen and Tanya's. And they will actually take part in working on a farm and understanding the, the, the need for the agro-tourism aspect of, our, of the destination and how we supply, we eat what we grow basically in Dominica. So these are things I think, and, and I think that whole, aspect of working in nature making an impact but it also does something for the human being also i think it's a very transformational experience that you can get from work in nature and this is what we encourage persons to do so it's not only coming to work and coming to have fun but also what can it do for me as a person and how does that develop me um, over over that short space of time or even lengthen a longer period of time on island um, some of the activities that we are really trying to work on, we, we have been putting together a project um, for a nomad community, and that community will be in the north of the island. Um, we have had a lot of housing and that they are equipped to house long-term work in nature visitors with all the requirements I mentioned about the, the, the high-speed internet, 
um, offerings, the co-working spaces, et cetera. Um, right now, we have um, certification ongoing for these properties because we really want to make sure they meet minimum um, health standards and also to the Discover Dominic Authority standards, along with the safety protocols that we have put in place um, on island. We are also working on course, some, of, some very unique co-working spaces um, in the north, south, and central um, of the island. And these, I, I think what, what makes it unique also is not these large scale um, properties, but we're looking at maybe like a dive shop. And we have had persons who have gone to, that, to a particular dive shop in the south um, to co-work and they end up learning how to free dive. Free dive is very popular right now in the international community of, of diving. Um, and they learn to free dive, they learn to scuba dive, you know, so it, it gives you something back also while being able to, to meet with persons at a local restaurant who has um, um, co-working spaces. So persons get to hang out with, with the locals and understand the destination and understand the lifestyle, understand the culture, I think, which, like I said, broadens your mind. Um, so we really want persons to get creative, get see what they, the innovative thoughts, what they can do, what they, what can, they can experience while sipping on a, an island um, local beer or eating um, some, some of our island food, which we are so well known for, for the Creole flavors and getting that, that idea that you can just, you know, say, hey, this is the perfect place where I, where I can really express myself and really um, come to terms with what I am doing and, and my life um, in general. Of course, I wanted to touch quickly on the, the fees. Uh, we actually have some of the cheapest fees um, for the working need, for the, the, the working um, remotely program. We have a non-refundable application fee, which is just US $100. Uh, single applicants, uh, US $800 and family, because we really want to push the family um, option of the working nature is um, $1,000. $200. Of course, we recognize that persons with businesses, we've had persons with businesses coming in inquiring for their staff. We have 800 US for the first applicant and 500 for each additional applicant um, applying for. So this is just sums up the fees. Of course, we encourage persons to go to the Work in Nature um, website at www.windominica.gov.dm. Um, for further details, or they can also follow us on Facebook at Work in Nature. Um, we have been working with a number of um, digital nomads throughout. You can go to Adventurely. You can um, get more information through Island Innovation. And we will be doing some, some work with some um, digital nomad bloggers, et cetera. So we really want persons to look out for more information on the Work in Nature um, program, uh, which we think has done can do so much for, for both the destination on its own and also for you as an individual coming to work uh, in Dominica. Um, in closing, I'm going to leave you with a short video. Of course, we were going to go a little go more in depth in the questions and, and, and answers afterwards. The world has changed. You have changed, adapted, and what you needed to do to be a part of the solution. But life has become confined, limited. Home, work, meetings, deadlines, it is all being combined into one space. In a world where you can now work anywhere, where would you choose to be? your well-being, embody the lifestyle you wish to live, see this change as a gift, an opportunity to explore a life you only previously imagined. Work in nature on the Caribbean island of Dominica, rejuvenate your body, sharpen your mind, and find productivity in serenity. The Work in Nature Extended Stay Visa Program allows you to obtain a visa for 18 months to work remotely in Dominica. In as little as a week, your application can be processed. If you could be here, free, happy, revitalized. Stay connected from the most beautiful place in the world.
Dominica, connected to nature, connected to the world. Thank you so much for that overview, Sam. That was really great. And um, it's exciting to see how you frame this and the, what the opportunity is. And I think I can see already on the uh, comments, people asking so many questions and we'll come to all of the questions um, in a few minutes after we interview or have a little presentation from Hannah, who's currently in Dominica and is a, is a remote worker. But just quickly, I'm seeing people joining from other parts of the Caribbean, from Trinidad and from Curacao and Guadeloupe, seeing people, other people in Dominica as well, but people also from Canada, from the UK, France, um, even Madagascar, uh, Texas, all over the US. So a real range of people joining in. So please do, if you're watching on Facebook, say hello in the comments, say where you're joining us from so we can uh, learn a little bit about who is interested. And if you do have questions, go ahead and type those in and we'll come to those in a minute. But what's it like living and working in Dominica? So Hannah Gaventa, when did you move there, Hannah? Uh, well, I've been here since November this time. <laughs> since November. Okay, so you moved there in November. I know you've been a little bit there before. You're a portfolio manager at Palladium, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what you do, why you moved to Dominica, and what your experience has been like. Sure, no problem. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for inviting me to join to share some experiences. So my name is Hannah. I'm from London in the UK. And I have spent the past 10 years working for different NGOs actually doing disaster response work and um, international development. So I first heard of Dominica when my boss of my NGO at the time called me to say that there was a hurricane that was hitting the Caribbean and would I be okay to go and um, work in Dominica to help communities <laughs> to help communities recover? Um, and to work together with the government of Dominica and partner with communities in Dominica to, um, as Samantha said, um, rebuild and um, really work to improve the situation to um, respond to this really massive disaster that happened in 2017. So I um, have to say that I didn't exactly know too much about Dominica, except they had some British Dominican friends so I called them all and I said, hey, I might be going to Dominica. And they told me all about their parents and their grandparents who were brought up in Dominica. And I learned a little bit. And just a few weeks later, I was on a plane and um, spent a year and a half working here for an NGO called Israel Aid. Um, we did all kinds of great projects in education and child protection and livelihoods. Uh, we had a really cool project with beekeepers where we um, were able to support the beekeepers in Dominica to rebuild the honey industry and all kinds of things. And I absolutely love living in Dominica. I mean, you've seen from Samantha's presentation how beautiful it is. And she mentioned the people being resilient, but she um, also should tell you that the people in Dominica are super friendly and warm and it's a very family community atmosphere in Dominica. So I felt very at home. I was invited to my colleagues families for Sunday lunch and um, to go and have drinks after work on Friday, uh, to play dominoes after work and all kinds of things. Um, and my job contract finished um, in 2019, uh, at the end of 2019. And I thought, okay, well, I'll go back to the UK, I'll find a new job and probably stay in the UK for a while. Um, and COVID hit. <laughs> So I spent a few months in lockdown in London and in November, I asked my boss if I could visit Dominica and go on holiday for a couple of weeks and have a little bit of a, a break. Um, she was very happy because I hadn't used any of my annual leave yet. <laughs> and those few weeks kind of turned into a few months. And at some point we had a discussion and she said, really amazingly, you know, um, it doesn't matter where you are as long as um, you're doing your work well and we have a high trust in this company and we know that you're gonna work hard and do everything you need to do. So my project now is actually in nine different countries, although not in Dominica. So that means that I'm struggling sometimes with lots of different time zones um, and lots of different waking hours, but all of that is worth it to be in Dominica um, and have that work-life balance that we just heard about so clearly. 
So I thought I would tell you a bit about my day-to-day -day life um, and share a little bit. And um, I'm really excited to hear your questions and happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I don't yet know how long I'll be around for, but um, most likely when offices open at some point, maybe <laughs> back in the UK, then I'll go back. Um, but as for now, I'm really enjoying my time. So I wake up pretty early at around 5 a.m. And um, I work online mostly. So all my meetings are online and um, I spend most of the time on my laptop um, very early with lots of coffees. And once my work is finished for the day around 2 p.m. in Dominica time, the world is my oyster, you know, I can do whatever I want around the island. And I'm really lucky to have a great network here to have built a really amazing circle of friends who now feel like family. So we have been getting together quite a bit to um, do all kinds of activities. <laughs> we all really feel um, that we want to make the most of the privilege that we have here in Dominica where it is safe to be living and um, doing all these things. And we know how lucky we are to be in Dominica and how important it is to um, be aware of that privilege whilst other people in the world are really suffering from COVID-19 and all its effects. Um, so some of the things that I've been trying to do is to have some new hobbies. Um, so I recently met a, a local DJ, DJ Shaista, um, on the island, and we decided we'd do a skills swap. So he would teach me how to DJ and I would teach him how to play the keyboard. Um, I've been learning to scuba dive, so that's been really amazing. I mean, the seas are almost more beautiful than the land here in Dominica. Um, I recently did a dive where I saw a couple of turtles and the sea is so clear that you can just see everything and it's absolutely magical. Um, recently, I've started learning to horse ride, which is something I never learned in London, <laughs> um, being from a city. And that's been pretty exciting. Uh, I've been having proper lessons, so not got very far. <laughs> I've only had a few lessons, um, but I'm learning how to make the horse go in a zigzag. And I have um, a new friend in the horse that I have learned on called General. Um, and that's been really exciting. And generally in the evenings when everyone else finishes work, we go out for dinner at a local beach bar, um, or we go and meet in each other's houses and have dinners and bring a dish and share it. Um, Sometimes we sit together and we play dominoes on the beach and we drink rum punch. It's all really kind of surreal to be doing these things in this time. And for me, it's just been honestly the most magical experience in the last few months to be able to work really hard, but then also have the work-life balance. That, to be honest, I've never really had in my last 10 years of working with disasters. <laughs> um, where it's obviously very difficult to have that work-life balance. And one of my uh, goals for 2020 actually was to promote myself <laughs> and my own work-life balance for my mental well-being. And although I couldn't do that in the first half of 2020, I really tried to make that happen in late 2020 and 21. Um, and these are all things that I want to take back to the UK and eventually maybe DJ for parties and my fr with my friends and teach them all how to make rum punch <laughs> and all kinds of things like that. Um, I, I want to say something about my experience in quarantine, so or managed experience, as we just heard it being called. Um, I was very concerned um, to leave in, in the UK in November. Um, actually, the day I left, the UK went back into lockdown. And I was very terrified that I would step foot in Dominica, a very small island, and bring COVID to the island. But I felt very safe in the experience and was able to um, be in the hotel and to really feel safe and to really feel like the testing was um, effective. And when I left that, that seven days of my first week, um, I was very confident that I had not actually brought COVID to Dominica. <laughs> Um, and was able to go forth and enjoy the island. Um, so that was really, really impressive actually. Um, and at every stage in the airport, um, you know, you felt looked after, everything was very smooth and communication was really good. So you always knew exactly where you stand and what's happening. And um, I was very impressed with Dominica to be able to pull that off actually really well. 
Um, so I felt very safe and um, I really do feel part of a, a community in Dominica and um, I love being able to have the spontaneous life that is not exactly the same in London where it's um, busy all the time and you make plans months in advance. But I could call up a friend now and say, hey, what are you doing in the next half an hour? Do you want to go visit the hot water springs and have a soak and relax our body <laughs> after the day? Um, so that is really brilliant. I really like that. Um, and so, yeah, so this has been my last six months or so. And I'm super grateful to my boss for putting that trust in me to be able to work anywhere. Um, most of my friends are Dominican, but there are also a whole circle of people who are free divers and scuba divers who have come to really learn those skills on the island, um, and a few people who are also remote working. So there are many different ways to be feeling part of a community um, and to get involved in different projects. So in um, Christmas time, I felt very strongly that um, I could see the suffering that the pandemic was having on the tourism industry and the families surrounding that. Um, so I actually did a crowdfunding campaign um, for a couple of local NGOs that I knew about and it was able to raise a thousand pounds, which went directly to educational um, institutions to provide some laptops and to help families with some school uniforms and things like that, um, which was really brilliant. And I had so much support from friends back in the UK who wanted to donate and to do something. And that was also a really special part of the experience for me as well. <laughs> uh, it really sounds amazing. And I think what's really special about what maybe people in Europe or in North America might think of when they think about a Caribbean holiday is a beach resort where they can relax. And of course you have that opportunity, but also when you're staying there for longer, it's a real opportunity to give back as you've been doing, interact with locals and really understand the culture. And I think often when you go on that resort holiday, you miss out on that. You miss out on, because I, I've spent, I unfortunately have not visited Dominique yet. I'm hoping to get there very soon, but I've spent a lot of time in the Caribbean and, and, and Dominique has a very special culture as do each of the individual islands, I know. Um, but the Caribbean culture is really so rich and such a really warm and warm in many ways uh, and loving place. So um, no, thank you so much, uh, Hannah and Samantha for sharing this opportunity. Um, a few questions coming up, logistical questions um, and also questions about the experience. So maybe, um, and this, this might be, there might be a few repeats here, but I think it's fine just to get the information. One for you first, Samantha, um, who is eligible? Which nationality is someone's asking from Canada, um, and also people from other parts of CARICOM um, and, and Europe. So who can actually apply for this opportunity? Um, everyone can apply for that for this opportunity. Once they meet the criteria um, outlined, um, like I said, you can go to the um, website at windominica.gov.dm. Um, you can click on the eligibility tab and you can get the information with regards to how you can apply and who, but all nationalities can apply. Fantastic. Um, and then also, hang on, I'm getting overwhelmed with all my um, <laughs> with all my questions coming in in here. Oh, a very specific one, pets. I don't know if this is something that you've considered um, and uh, if that's if that's come up, but can someone bring, for example, a dog with them at this point? Yes, they can. I actually had someone who came in for the safe in nature and they brought their dog because they refused to leave their dog home. <laughs> Um, in the care of someone else, you know. So yes, you can. Um, once you provide the necessary necessary requirements, go through the the veterinary um, protocols, etc., for bringing in pets on island, it can it can happen. Okay, okay, great. Um, one for you, Hannah, just about your experiences. I mean, I know there's lots of different things, and you talked about a few of them. But what is kind of the top experience that you would say? You know, in my first week visiting Dominica. What are the top kind of bucket list things I have to make sure I, I do? Well, you know, there's a, quite a few of those. <laughs> um, I really try to go hiking with my friends every weekend um, and to be active. So there's always a new place, a new waterfall to explore. And then the best thing to close off the day is to visit the hot water springs. And there are a few of those as well to choose from. 
And honestly, when you're sitting in that hot water under the stars amongst the trees, there's just nothing like that. I was there last night, actually, and a few of my friends and I were saying, you know, it's so different to sitting in a, <laughs> in a corporate gym jacuzzi where uh, you can't see anything and it's chlorinated and things like that. But um, being under the stars and being able to watch the sunset in the hot water and then see the stars come out so brightly. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah, and I was just looking on online a comment from Cecil who says, Hannah, based on your crowdfunding efforts, you deserve the life you're now living in Dominica, <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, so, okay, another practical question, vaccines. Um, how do they work? Do I need a vaccine or what's the, what's the plan there? Okay, so as it is now, um, both vaccinated or non-vaccinated persons can enter Dominica once they go through the, re the, the required protocols, filling out the health questionnaire before um, doing your PCR test 72 hours before arrival, you get a rapid test done at the ports of entry, and then you get to take part in the Safe in Nature um, program I mentioned earlier. So um, as it is now, um, persons are still still has have to get their um, PCR test to enter, but um, we are actually looking at the the updating the protocols and you know just kind of you kind of have to it's like a balancing act I should say looking at what's happening locally what's happening regionally what's happening globally um, with regards to protocols and regards to the COVID um, pandemic and of course based on that we will be reviewing um, based on the vaccination rollout in different countries um, you know what what routes that we take but for now people still have to go through the regular process um, being vaccinated or non-vaccinated. Okay. Good to know. Switching from vaccines to just as important food. <laughs> uh, Dominican food is perhaps not known that much outside of the region, uh, but I've been looking at some of the, the pictures that have been coming up on the um, uh, on the information about the program. And I know not only is there kind of a, a really unique local cuisine, but also you have, I guess, the local agriculture and the local fresh in ingredients. So maybe need uh, back to you first Samantha and then Hannah for your own experience well I mean I'm going to say what better place to eat than in Dominica <laughs> um, I think it's the land of foodies um, because Dominica is a volcanic island of course that translates to giving our soil that rich um, um, minerals so we are rich in fruits and vegetables um, that we are well known for in the region um, our herbs and spices um, to flavor dishes like uh, what we call crab kalaloo um, you know, or what we call a fish broth or a fish soup. Uh, we have our wildlife dishes, our vegetable dishes, um, what we call black pudding, which is actually made from the intestines and of the pig. Um, you know, if you're looking for more grassroots type or, or just even the fine dining, they're, they're all available. Um, and another point Hannah mentioned, she was talking about the, the bush rums. Um, and these can be found in a variety in within all communities. You, there's always a, a, a rum shop <laughs> in every community laden with different bush rums. That they, they actually cure certain ailments. You will take some for the cold, some for um, stomach pains. Um, you know, so so you have ginger, you have some from the sea grapes, you have from cu cucumbers, you have rosemary. And I think um, there's some for the more adventurous types. And I, I'm one of those who like to try anything once. Um, you can even get those which are infused with um, a snake or a centipede or even lizards. Um, but most famously, I would say, um, we have it infused with what is called the Bois Bade. And that translates directly to hard wood. And it's actually considered a, a natural aphrodisiac. So the, the gentlemen love drinking the Bois Bade rum. Um, but it's really good because a lot of our things are homegrown. It's not imported. So everything leads to that, that healthier, more balanced diet. And it really, it really lends well to the holistic experience we want persons to have while on island. Amazing. Yeah, lots of uh, <laughs> different tastes there to explore. What about you, Hannah? Yeah, I, I have to say that the ginger rum is my favorite mm -hmm. and um, touch wood and all the things I've never been sick in Dominica in the past few years. So it must be all the rum. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, no, I think that I honestly am the healthiest I've ever been. Super active all the time, always outside, the sun and the fresh food, as you say. I mean, I know where exactly which chickens my eggs are coming from. And I know the honey is coming from those beekeepers that I mentioned previously. And um, the vegetables are coming from the farmer down the road. And it's obviously not like that in London always. <laughs> so I really enjoy that farm to table kind of atmosphere. And I really do feel strong and healthy and um, really enjoy that aspect of being here in Dominica. And again, it's worth emphasizing for people who don't really know much about Dominica, um, how lush the rainforest is. I mean, how lush the forest is and uh, the, the food that, that grows there really is, is growing in this really kind of fertile green environment. Just Google Dominica. You can see a bit behind uh, on Samantha's background as well. But yeah. Google Dominica and look at the photos because perhaps it's not exactly what you might first imagine when you think of a Caribbean island. Yeah. And, and James, to add to that, we actually have the highest number of centenarians um, in the Caribbean yeah. region. And when you speak to any one of them, they will tell you, well, what is the secret? And they will say, you know what? Enjoyment, family and the food that I eat. So that speaks volumes for, for the cuisine that, that's here in Dominica. I'm just looking at the comments again. Christy said, greetings from Miami. The crab callaloo sounds great. Thumbs up. <laughs> Maybe I was just going to add about the food, which is talking about sustainability. Um, in Dominica, you can really eat seasonally. And I think that's so important for the world at the moment. And um, fish is farmed sustainably. And you know exactly which fishermen as well the fish is coming from. And everything is seasonal. So um, it's really important to consider that. If you want to live a sustainable lifestyle, Dominica is really a great place to do that and to practice some of those things you maybe have always wanted to try in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we, we've talked a lot about the fun part, but the program is called Work in Nature. Um, and so we're getting a couple of questions coming in, which I think is very reasonable about internet connections. Well, we'll point out that we've had no issues today and that your video is coming through great. And also when you shared that video, which is an important clue that it came across uh, perfectly. But mm -hmm. um, anything that you want to share about internet connections? Because obviously that is a big concern for many of people. Of course, and, and, and we expect that. Um, we have um, very good internet connectivity across the island. It's provided by um, two major um, service providers, Digicel and Cable and Wireless. Um, they also have incredible data plans for persons I know of persons who go um, on the, by the river with their laptop on data and, and, and work. Um, so, so the connectivity is, is pretty good. Um, like I mentioned, most a lot of the properties also have um, internet Wi-Fi um, accessibility um, for guests. Or like I mentioned, persons can actually purchase their individual plans um, if they so choose. And, and um, the pricing is really good depending on what you want, be it a seven-day monthly plans, you know, that type of thing. So um, this is not a question. Um, it's not, it's not a, 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 a should hurt something to hurt your head on. And um, we definitely have really good internet connectivity here. Great, great. And I guess a follow on similar but different question is um, what about what like co working spaces or working spaces? I know you talked about this nomad village that, that, that is uh, has there are some plans underfoot for. Um, um, I guess what is the vision? that you have for where people will stay, where people will work? Obviously, everyone's different, but um, what can people expect? What, what are the options available for both living and working? So we wanted to give a variety of, of options. So persons have the certified properties that they can stay, stay in. Um, you have the hotel type of properties. But I also, I, I actually know of this gentleman who got a cottage in the mountains because he was a travel writer and he wanted, you know, just quiet, um, just re really remote um, for Dominica purposes also, very remote and he could just write and do whatever he wants. Um, so you have, you have the different options. You have the small cottage style, you have the, the, the luxury style, you have the boutique style um, of, of, of properties um, being offered. We also, like I mentioned, you mentioned earlier too, that we're putting together this nomad village and we found, found it necessary because persons might want that community, that, that close-knit type of, of, of look and feel. Um, and like I mentioned, this is currently being worked on um, on island. 
um, along with the co-working spaces. Um, we, we wanted to do something very different with our co-working spaces when, when we started push it out to actually have them a little more communal, a little more um, personalized um, than, you know, just a really large hotel lobby or something like that. So we're really looking at getting that, that intimate feel um, within the, the co-working spaces and for, for um, persons working remotely. Okay, great, great. Um, I think one of the big things that people do have is this community aspect. They want to go somewhere and they don't, they worry about perhaps being on their own or you know, being with their partner and no one else for weeks and months on end. Um, and it sounds like, I mean, not only you'll have a community of other uh, travelers, expats, nomads, uh, whoever that will be there as well. But also, Hannah, your experience sounds like you've made a lot of local friends as well, and people are pretty open to um, kind of interacting with with visitors staying for longer term. Yeah, I mean, I have to say I'm never alone. <laughs> um, I have constant social patterns. Um, that could be me, but I think it's mostly about Dominica <laughs> and how much people want to socialize and meet others and to get to know everyone and to have a run together. Um, and to get to know different people from different backgrounds. Um, and I think that's really amazing. And I've never felt a, a divide between me being British and my friends being Dominican. It's just, we're just people and we like each other and we hang out. <laughs> and it's, it's not like an us and them thing. It's just, uh, we're all people together. And I think that isn't always the case in many places, but in Dominica, I've never found that to be at all a problem. And, and I, I love that about the island and i think that's really important fantastic i'm just reading a few more of the comments we need to speak about dominican gastronomy is one of them um love the initiative dominica brilliant work to create opportunities great job samantha latang and hello from martinique uh, a whole range of different people kind of adding in their thoughts okay. and and ideas um so more questions we have um, we have plenty. It's really important for people maybe to think about the opportunity uh, for traveling with children. Um, are you marketing this mostly at families or are you expecting families to come? What will be the impact there? I, I know you mentioned this a little bit, Samantha, in your uh, talk. And we had a specific question um, from uh, Stacey Alvarez. Uh, that said, as a woman and a parent, one of the first things to consider is safety and access to medical care. So how safe is Dominica for women and children? And what is the healthcare system like for visitors? Okay, so a couple so of questions I, there. So um, I'll start with the crime aspect. Crimes against visitors are, are practically non-existent. It's very low. Um, we continue to prove that we are one of the safe safest islands in the Caribbean region um, for women, for children. Um, you know, I mean, but, but still, you still have to, you know, be aware of your surroundings and show that you you protect yourself and your your family and your thing, but your your um, belongings. But Dominica is very safe. Um, with regards to the the opportunities for um, children, um, I think it it is one of the things that we encourage. We would love more families. We have actually had um, a family, a number of families. Um, one in particular, their their kids were still online schooling um, from the US. So in the morning, they will do their school, have their projects, et cetera. And in the afternoon, they got them enrolled into the local football, the soccer league, football, football league, where they were, were meeting other children of their, their age group. They brought them to parties because they were living in a very nice um, community where they would have parties on the weekends. They would go to the beach with, with, with other parents and children. So I think um, it's more of a, of a holistic um, view. Um, I also know of another family who, who were, were able to enroll their daughter in one of the primary schools, one of the public schools in the city. So she, she went through the entire program. It's an easy process. It's just a matter of once, if you're applying, you can inquire. Um, on the website, there's an opportunity to ask questions, um, get an, send an email and we can get your feedback and give you specific information. There are schools, um, like I mentioned from, to kindergarten to, to daycare opportunities from to kindergarten to primary school to secondary and to tertiary um, level. Uh, so persons can have that opportunity and for both private and public um, schooling. 
And it is, like I mentioned again, it is safe for, for your kids. They have school feeding programs where they can have the lunch lunchtime. Um, you have late afternoon pickups if that's possible. And they do extracurricular activities within the school um, curriculum. So I think it is an opportunity for um, kids to, to learn a new culture and um, while their parents are, are, are working here in Dominica. Hannah, anything you want to add from a personal perspective about your experiences? Sure, I mean, I don't have kids, so I can answer <laughs> more the question about women. Um, I would say that as a woman traveling in the world in general, I'm always extremely aware that sometimes there are issues in the world. Um, and I think that's the attitude you have to have everywhere. Um, you know, in Dominica, there are <laughs> sometimes experiences where people um, want to maybe push their boundaries, um, but that also happens in London. And I think as a woman, you learn very early, unfortunately, how to deal with those kinds of things. Um, and that's uh, something that I think is prevalent everywhere in the world. And you have to be really aware of that as you travel. And I think it's really important to understand that um, in Dominica, if anything terrible were to happen, then you do have the network and the community around you. And, and those things will be dealt with very well by the police force and um, you would be taken seriously and um, made to feel comfortable. Um, and I would say that I have probably like 20 or 30 people who would um, run to my rescue if any <laughs> situation were to arise. Um, so I think that that's also important to, when you do have that network to think about some of the challenges and how the network can support you and each other in those scenarios, which um, do happen around the world and we're being honest in this conversation. So I think that's important as well. Of course, I really appreciate that. And actually Stacey's just commented saying, thank you for your honesty there, Hannah, and the, the insight. So that's, uh, that's really great. Um, so, Okay, one, te one question has actually come in from our own team member from Island Innovation, Simon, who wanted to ask about the costs. I think that's because he's thinking about moving there himself okay. and coming on the program. But, um, you know, how much per month? I mean, I think there's a limit, there's a minimum uh, income that you mentioned to apply to the program. Um, and then also how much realistically would you need to budget to live um, comfortably in, in, in Dominica as a, as a visitor? Okay, so I can start off. Maybe Hannah will talk about the, the living expenses. Um, of course, um, the, the head of household, as head of household, if you're um, planning to come, you just need a minimum um, income to show that you can support yourself, support your spouse or, or dependents, if any, um, of at least $50,000 um, US dollars coming in, or you show that you have that means to support yourself. Um, of course, living in Dominica, it is dependent on where you, where you live. Um, of course, if you live more in the city, it's going to be more expensive, be it for accommodation, for apartments, for food, as opposed to um, in the more rural areas. So I don't know if Hannah wants to touch on, on, on what, she, what she, she thought of with regards to the living um, costs um, in Dominica. Sure, yeah. Um, so I think my main two costs are renting an apartment and uh, renting a car. So the public transport system in Dominica is great, um, but to have flexibility to visit the places that I wanted to visit um, all over the island, I felt like I wanted to rent a car. Um, and those two things can be more expensive. As um, Samantha said, depends where you live in Dominica. Um, it can be a real range. Um, I am sure that Discover Dominica has some kind of budget on the website, so I'm not sure what's written on there. Um, but in terms of costs, I would say that those two are the big expenses and um, food and other day to day activities. Um, also, depending on how you eat and what you eat can be really reasonable. Um, I shop for my vegetables in the market and um, buy some other things in the local supermarket. Um, I can get anything that I want really um, in Dominica, depending on, <laughs> you know, what I feel like in the moment. Um, and so I think that that's a great privilege as well. Um, and I would say that day to day living and activities um, is really reasonable. Um, 
the hot water that I keep mentioning because it's my favorite thing <laughs> um, is about five US, I think, um, if you go there um, regularly. Um, and I try to go a couple of times a week. So that's it. Really it sounds like you go there regularly. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, you know, and you can always get a, a local beer or a rum for a small amount of money. And um, those are the things I think about. <laughs> other mm. people may think about other things, but um, you balance your costs as to how you want to live your life. Um, and I think it goes back to that sustainability piece and um, being able to think clearly about how you want to support the local economies and to buy locally and all of those things to me are really important and something that you can do very easily in Dominica. Mm -hmm. And, and if, I, if I should mention um, on the website, there actually is a cost of living guide, um, just a simplified cost of living to give you a, a general idea. Um, so they can click on the, the, the living in Dominica tab and they can get the cost of living if they want to look at that, or they can actually just send a, an email um, send us a question and we will respond as soon as we have specifics with regards to, to those types of things. And, and if you're watching on Facebook, you can see that link is in the pinned comment. So you can go straight to the Working Dominica website to find out that information. And there's lots more information. I mean, we're talking through there. All, a lot of these questions are on the website um, in, in various forms as well. And I, I know that there's some contact information there also. Um, so we have a four minutes or so um, left. I guess a, another quick um, practical question about the, the visa. I believe it's 18 months you mentioned. Just to clarify, does that start when you're accepted? Do you have to kind of come to Dominica straight away um, or it starts when you enter? And I, I guess part two of that question is also, is there any support for people when they when they arrive um, uh, that, that, that can kind of help people um, find out and answer these questions like accommodation, et cetera, what kind of support do you have? Okay, so um, the visa starts from the time you land and the immigration officer stamps that your passport with the working nature visa. So that's, that's when it starts. The processing and everything takes place beforehand. It's just, it's not part of the, the, the visa process. Um, once they get on, I know what we, might, what we try to encourage is that they, get their accommodation, everything beforehand. Of course, if I'm coming to a destination, I would want to at least you know, know where I'm staying. And um, what we have been working with the accommodation service providers, um, and they're aware of, and they have been working on that already, they, they know these things, that they will work directly with, with, with their, their guests um, on the opportunities, on what there is to the things to do in the community, um, projects that they may be interested in. So we want to start the rapport beforehand and, and getting you in touch with your accommodation service provider earlier on would be ideal so that person can be sort of your guide to um, that community um, sort of like your tour guide accommodation all-in-one type of thing so it's a matter of where you book and, 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 and the relationship that you have but of course like I said you can always still send emails ask us the questions and we can always go through the process with you, it is not um, something too difficult that we cannot work on with you. Fantastic. Well, I think that covers most of the main questions. Or we'll maybe just ask each of you to wrap up with anything else on your mind um, in a second before you finish. But I mean, personally, I'm sold. I'm uh, I was sold before. I was looking forward to visiting anyway. Um, and hopefully for me, travel will be a bit a bit easier, and it will happen at at some point in the next few months. And I'm sure there's plenty of people who are looking at the Work in Nature program, uh, but also hopefully we'll look if, if 18 months is, is, is too long for you, we'll just look at shorter stays in Dominica um, as well. And I believe you can come without a visa for several several months from a lot of countries as, as well. I think it varies according, check according what, what your passport, but there's still a great opportunity to travel um, to the island as uh, vaccinations and everything else hopefully make these things uh, easier in the in the short term. Um, but thank you so much to both of you, Hannah, Samantha, maybe just any any final words, uh, Hannah first, and then we'll ask Sam to wrap up. Yeah, sure. Um, no, I think it's just important to do your research and to really talk to people and um, find out exactly um, what you what life will be like. But it's at the end of the day, it's an adventure and you won't know so adjust all your expectations that you have right now and just be open to new experiences and new people and to be 
you know, in an amazing, beautiful place and to be open as well to enjoy that and to be present in the moment and watch those sunsets and <laughs> really live life. And I think that's um, how I want to live everywhere in the world. And um, yeah, I, I'm really grateful to Dominica for having me back <laughs> and um, to continue to feel like an honorary Dominican. And yeah, thank you all. <laughs> Amazing. Sam, anything else that you'd like to share? Yes, I really want to thank um, Island Innovations for, for um, spending time, you know, working with us and, and having this um, presentation today. Thank Hannah. I think Hannah is going to be a citizen of Dominica very soon. Um, um, gladly so, because I, I mean, I see Hannah everywhere I go, liming all over the place, I see Hannah. So she has really made, um, you know, her experience here in Dominica um, a meaningful one. And that is, I think that's what we want persons to, to do. It's not just about working remotely, but it's working remotely and being able to enjoy and, and have that holistic life experience that I think we're all longing for, especially coming out of the pandemic. I think everybody's looking at what, how can I get myself healthier and, 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 and more, rejuvenated or, or reinvent myself. And of course the work in nature extended say visa program of Dominica, I think does exactly that for, for you or your family. Um, we, are, we, are, we all welcome you um, to Dominica. So just go onto the website at windominica.gov.dm or follow us on Facebook at Work in Nature and um, get more information, ask questions. We are here to, to and, and willing to um, guide you through the process. Amazing. And liming, I guess that's a good piece of Dominican vocabulary for anyone who doesn't know. Is <laughs> that hanging out? You. Is that a good it's translation? Hanging out. I was Hang really waiting for you to ask me what is liming. I know Hannah know what it is. <laughs> no. out and going to different places and just enjoying um, um, the country. That's got to be the first word anyone should uh, should learn in 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 local uh, <laughs> local dialect. Amazing. Well, thank you, so, thank you both so much. Really great conversation. I'm looking forward to visiting Dominica soon, yes. and uh, I'm sure lots of people will be. So have a wonderful day, both of you, and thanks again. Thanks so much. Thank okay. you, James. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye.